Uh, I've probably, probably been asked to be a discussant because of my past in this, uh, in, in, in this institution and because of my French passport, uh, because I have to confess that I'm not uh, a specialist of uh, elections, and so uh, you, would ha you would have the comments of somebody who is certainly uh, not, not as competent as it should be uh, in order to, to discuss these uh, three very interesting and very three very rich papers. My first remark uh, concerning the uh, Martial's papers uh, was probably uh, felt by Marshall unconsciously because, uh, uh, in a way, he corrected the impression I had from his paper in his today's introduction. That is, you underline strongly that uh, probably one of the m main determinants of uh, voting for, uh, let's say, populist party was uh, hunger, that there was an emotional, em emotional uh, dimension which could not be taken into account uh, by, uh, let's say, economic or uh, identity uh, uh, cleavages. And indeed, it's very striking when you uh, give a look to, let's say, uh, the comments on any political uh, topic on the social networks. It's what the French call now dégagisme, that is, get out. Just get out. We do not know exactly why, if it's for economic reason, for identity reason, but we don't want to see you anymore. And this is a feeling which has been very strong in France, but probably in Italy too, but uh, I would not dare to, uh, to apply it myself to, to Italy. We, uh, we would have uh, views from experts on that. So the fact that initially you uh, focused, you insisted on the importance of emotions, anger, passion, seems to me extremely important if we wish to understand the populist upsurge in Europe, which is new in importance, but which is not new because it's a phenomenon that, for instance, we have observed in Italy for the past 20 years, and also even in France with the rise, <coughs> the continuous rise of the National Front. The second uh, remark I would like to, to make uh, is about, in a way, the three papers. Because obviously, each of these papers wish to focus on a precise dimension, the, the, the National Front, uh, the, the voters, uh, the uh, association of the voters to some uh, issues, etc. But at the same time, the key concepts which uh, structure, I would say, political science analysis have not really been re revised, revisited, rediscussed. And for instance, I wonder, uh, for instance, since this morning, and not only this session, but in the previous sessions, we have talked about parties of, as if parties were just parties. Well, if you look at the last, uh, at the European and the French uh, landscape, the parties, also, first of all, do not dare to call themselves parties. Movements, leagues. So it might be that they play the traditional role of parties in electoral terms, but certainly not, certainly not in the same way, with the same structure. Just to take the case of France, three of the four parties on the stage are movements. And three of the four have, let's say, self-selected, self-elected leaders. Macron, Le Pen, and Mélenchon are self-proclaimed leaders of their uh, respective movements. So we are talking, we are using the same wording, parties, but we are not talking really about the same uh, animals. More specifically, uh, in, in relation with Martial, Martial paper, uh, you refer quite often in the paper to the left-right 
cleavage. Well, it still exists probably, but what is the importance and what will be, if we can fo make focus, what will be uh, the, the, f the strengths of this traditional cleavage which has been so powerful in structuring political life in every Western democracy, what, what would remain of this? I would, I would, I would be tempted to, to use, I think, the, the, <clears throat> the, the title of a, of a project which was initiated at the Institute about 20 years ago, what's left? Hmm? So, what is left, but what's left of the existing political formation of the political parties uh, of the past. It would, I would make the same uh, remark as far as uh, uh, class is concerned. Class has been a fundamental, uh, fundamental uh, uh, cleavage, but does class represent, let's say, the basis for political organization in, uh, most, uh, in, in most European uh, countries. Or ideology, um, Martial, you use often ideology, both ideology of voters and ideology of uh, candidates. Obviously, it depends how we define ideology. But if we think of an ideology as a set of structuring and rather coherent uh, system of ideas and values and interest, I really wonder what's left or two of these ideologies. And in a certain way, it contradicts uh, the vision which is proposed uh, by, <coughs> by uh, Roma when he insists, in my view, rightly, on the importance of issues. So, if you focus on issues, and on issues which are defining a leader or a party, and the other issues being rather neglected, in a way, or secondary, in relation to this crucial issue, well, there is a contradiction between building up a a, an, a, an ideology which tries to encompass a s sometimes contradictory uh, issues under the hat of a political formation of a political movement. So are we still in a political system structured by ideologies or are we going towards systems which are structured by political issue, what I have called, uh, perhaps in a, uh, in, in a too uh, rapid and uh, superficial way, the uberization of politics. That is, you do not need any more mediation, you do, do not need to have a full flesh program, you do not need a full flesh ideology, but you pick up the, f the issues that you like and you uh, leave the, uh, the rest. Um, and finally, in relation with the <coughs> with, uh, Martial uh, paper, uh, you rightly focus, and that's uh, the right choice, you rightly focus on the French elections. That was your duty. And uh, a French uh, set of data. But uh, certainly that it would be interesting to uh, compare the evolution and transformation of populism in France vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, other European countries, uh, because we could uh, perhaps recognize that uh, France is the same as other countries, or that France has some specificities. And I see at least uh, two specificities in the French case. The first one is the traditional, the constant weakness of political parties in France in, in comparison with the other European countries. And the so, second uh, feature, which is really peculiar to France, is what I call the institutionalization of leadership, uh, something which is uh, 
not shared by most of the other European countries, which was introduced by De Gaulle in 1958, and which is so important that even the weakest, the, the, the most important president, such as Hollande, Hollande, was capable of surviving rather well, after all, during five years, the only sanctions that he could not candidate himself a second time. But he could survive. I don't know many other European countries where such a weak and contested leader could have survived for five, five years. Uh, uh, Romain's paper uh, makes a, a quite important uh, distinction that I think you do not fully exploit between what you call uh, associative uh, uh, ownership, that is uh, the capacity of the electorate to associate a candidate to uh, issues uh, that he considers as are crucial, and what you call competence ownership. That is, this time, not the association between uh, an issue and <clears throat> a candidate, but the capacity of this candidate to deal properly with this issue. And I think these two concepts are extremely interesting if you apply it to uh, Madame Le Pen because it's clear that most of the electorate for uh, Marine Le Pen was associating their vote to crucial issues such as identity. But the collapse of Marine Le Pen during the second debate was an issue of competence ownership. Uh, it's, it's not scientific, but I know many electors who were ready to vote, who had voted for Fillon, and who were probably ready to vote, or who were ready to vote for Marine Le Pen. And when they observed and saw her show on TV, they said, we can't put our money in the hands of this lady. She is totally incompetent when it, when it comes to economic, economic matters. So you had, in a way, uh, under, under the umbrella of the National Front, both these uh, uh, distinction between associative and um, uh, competence uh, uh, ownership. I already said that I share your, uh, your uh, focus and your insistence on the importance of, uh, of uh, issues, uh, which make uh, the life of traditional political parties impossible, because they used to sell a package. And now the, electro the, the voters have, in a way, opened the parcel, and they pick up what they wish, and they may change their mind, because what they wish today might be different tomorrow. So the political parties are mediators, are instruments of cohesion between various ideas and interests is today nearly impossible, and we see it everywhere, and uh, not only in France. The, the, and this brings more volatility, obviously, because you can vote according to the last idea which came to mind, or the, the last interest which came to mind. So uh, uh, obviously we cannot foresee uh, uh, the, the future, but I consider that volatility uh, the destruction of political parties are probably structural factors which will affect the future of uh, not only of France but uh, <coughs> also of, uh, of Europe. I also uh, appreciate uh, your uh, focus on the fact that voters were not applying the same criteria in evaluating let's say, the various issues proposed by the various candidates. So, in a, in a way, you sign the end of the rational voter, because if he was rational, he would uh, compare, uh, if he was fully rational, he would compare on the, with the same criteria the performance of the various uh, candidates. Okay. So, uh, the third paper by, uh, by Ailey, uh, it was uh, extremely clear in its uh, pr presentation, and it, it ends with a question mark. Is Le Pen's strategy an electoral impasse? 
and he is very cautious and careful in not saying, in not answering yes or no, uh, I would be tempted to answer to, uh, in his place and to say yes, probably that the uh, Le Pen's uh, strategy is an impasse for uh, several reasons. The first one is that it, within the French political system, first of all, not, not a single party wishes to ally with the National Front, except a minor, minor party which uh, takes two or three percent of the vote. So contrary to what has happened, for instance, in other countries because of the coalition systems, or contrary to uh, <coughs> what has happened, uh, for instance, in Italy, where Salvini and, and Berlusconi uh, have uh, made a... <laughs> a strange alliance which would probably not last, but uh, they have uh, done it. Contrary to, to that, both Le Pen and uh, the right in France, for the time being, have refused any kind of coalition, any kind of alliance. Which means that if things go on as today, it's probable that both National Front and Les Républicains, that is what is left from the right, uh, both will fail in the future because they will be unable to, uh, to simply get a majority and a majority which is amplified by the French electoral system which is rather uh, drastic in, in, in building up a, a, a majority. Well, um, so the future of populist party might be brighter and better in those countries which use proportional representation and which uh, are familiar with the creation of coalitions because it brings in populist party while in the French system they are totally excluded both for political but also for institutional reasons. So I do believe that uh, um, uh, Le Pen's, fortunately, that Le Pen's strategy is an impasse for these political and structural reasons. Thank you.